that we're going to add and marry, combine, so we can soften it up. Most of you had decent clay the other day, but if it's verging on the harder side, get yourself softer. Now this is too soft, so don't assume that if it's soft, it's good. There's a nice happy medium that you should be reaching here. And you want to do like a 50-50 or a flat, 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 pancakey. And could you hear that? When it made, makes that noise, it's really resistance and it's quite hard stiff. So we'll get a little bit and then I'm going to need a little bit more so I'll do another hunt. Okay and then of course layer soft hard soft hard up on top and we should be maybe able to see a, a, a coloration difference between the two. Not really. Um, but Bad way to put it back together is the same way you took it apart. And this, of course, if you slammed it down, is bad because it's exactly as we took it apart. So the good way is on top like that. Now, if you cut it really thin like that and you throw it, a lot of times it's hard to get layered onto each other. So if you cut it apart too thin, just flatten it out and then get it on top. If you don't do it the right way, you're spinning your wheels and doing, you know, repeating and never getting anywhere. So really concentrate on getting that right. Okay, you can kind of see a little bit of a coloration. And of course, a good slam down will help. And slam it and then get it on top of each other. And that does two things. It really compresses the clay compacts all that um, little air pockets. And of course, as it spits out, you can kind of feel it on your uh, clothing or maybe sometimes on your arm, depending on how tall you are. A good slam will really help compact it. And then as you get wet, try to aim for a dry portion of the table and also try not to get any of that dry, crusty stuff into your clay. And after you do it about six or eight times, you can see that it's still visible with that coloration. But after about six times, you've really got that compacted. This is only half the battle. The other half is doing the spiral wedging. And the spiral wedging will completely homogenize and also remove all the air bubbles. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna use half of this for right now and then we'll save the other half for another demo later, if necessary. Periodically clean that up. And we're ready to get that kind of a wedge. And then you're on the edge here. So many people are wedging like this, flat, and that's not gonna get you anywhere. So get up on the edge, push down and then pick up, and push down and then pick up. And the idea is that you're folding it on itself. And I'll show you that folding look again, which is one on top of another on top of another, kind of like the conch shell. All right, and then you're doing a little twist. I'm doing it kind of dramatic, but it's just enough to get that folding over in it. And of course, this portion is pushing down too. You usually do this about 75 times. The number is relative. If you're on your wheel in the, near, in the next couple of months and you find bubbles in your clay, you're not spending enough time over here, enough quality time. So if you find air bubbles, it's hard to center. And you can do it slow as I was earlier or a little bit faster if you want. But as you can see, all of those are layering and if you can see that minute little cracking that's happening right over there, all of that, that's the air bubbles being uh, squeezed out. And of course, remember I have that cinder block if you want to get a little taller and push up. And then, like the morning class, there was like eight people trying to work on here. And if that's the case, you can work on one of these side tables. 
But remember, the canvas dries out your clay faster, so spritz it down, and of course, clean it up. Spritzing it down will keep that table from drying it out. It'll add some moisture. You use too much and it becomes goo, and then you don't have that, that stickiness that you need. Okay, and then we're going to go on the wheel in about two seconds. Now, periodically, or when we have that test, what I'll do is I'll start looking and cutting open and observing if you've got any air bubbles. And I'll do it like three times, looking and seeing. And that might be an air bubble, that little guy right there. But sometimes it's um, just junk in your clay, meaning little particles of sponge or something. And then when the test comes up, we're gonna have four bottles of clay that you'll have presented for me to look for air bubbles, and then you'll have the three hours to center each one of those four bottles. And then, of course, immediately after that, you're gonna have your cylinders too. And that could be a wide variety, whether, you know, you just work towards cylinders. Whether you're able to get some good ones or some marginal ones, the idea is that you're getting better working toward that goal. Don't get too caught up with the frustration of um, not getting anything out in these first couple of weeks. I think I told you the key thing is effort. And those persons that come in and practice uh, usually get further. But we've had a few students that were, you know, just couldn't do it. But they were in here all the time, and they still got a really good grade. Um, but it stands the reason that if you're in here all the time working, you get better. And this was yours. Okay, I'm going to take that off and work. And remember, all of you should be over here. Bring a chair over if you need to. But I don't want to see anybody over there because you won't have any view of what's happening over here. All right, let's see what kind of tools we got here. Didn't I promise somebody a chamois the other day? I thought one of your night people had. Was that you? Sheldon maybe? Yeah. All right, I'm using that to clean up. It's far better than your fingernails. And then you can get the sponge to further clean it. And of course, this is anchored down quite nicely. If you find in the middle of your throwing, if that's clicking on you, going back and forth, take it up, clean off the bottom, and put fresh clay on the bottom. And of course, if you've been working on it all day long, water gets up under here and softens those guys. So periodically, you might have to put some fresh little balls of clay. All right, morning class, we still had people way back here. So get your body in close. You should have your, your uh, body up even with this. And the idea is to get your body over the wheel so you have leverage. And a little bit of water, too much water, it won't stick. If you got water and water, it won't stick. So plop it down. And as you can tell, that's way off center. And I noticed yours was doing that. So if, if you have that problem, take all the wetness off and dry your hand and smack it into place. Or we can cut it off and ball it and put it back on. But anytime you find your hands going back like that, um, it's too hard for you to really strengthen, muscle it into place. So I'm gonna karate chop it, hit it into the areas. Um, not only sides, but top and really get that adhered stuck onto the back and then karate chop it so that you got that little pinky area and then if you want to and this is highly re recommended when you do that you suction it on better too and then of course you got a little area for your pinkies to fit into Remember, that's the portion of your hand that you really want to be concentrating on. 
less so here. And they're there, but not as much as the others. Enough water, so you're not filling up your splash pan. You see the distance here in the middle, so this needs to be anchored in. They tell me that the three I've ordered are coming. Um, and so there's a couple up there. Well, there'll be four brand new ones that are a little bit tighter. And if that's the case, it might take a little bit more muscle to um, slide them in because they're, they're uh, newer and less worn out, worn down. Okay, just enough water and then get in the habit of sopping up any excess that you have. All right, Sheldon's here, so we'll wait for his, uh, his body to... Shell, we're waiting for you. <laughs> All right, um, Maddie, can you see? You're right behind, uh, and whether you sit down or stand or whatever, um, just make sure Mad can see. All right. Should I stand on that side? Yeah, yeah. And you're in a poor situation too. If you want to sit here, you'll be in a prime situation. Prime, prime spot. Remember, everything happens over here, so witnessing it from that side is, you know, missing out on the most important thing. And, of course, videotaping it from this side is even better. All right, so here we go. Step number one, three-four speed. Get your hands in position, and remember, you're moving just your back, not your arms. Your arms move with your back. My phone, and I mentioned the morning class, I always say this, but... And it, when I work in my own studio, I've got my phone out on my table. It just seems to be always in the way when I'm here demonstrating because I want to get my elbow down where it is. All right, so step one, close, get close here, and then just lean forward and watch what happens, the template. As you lean into it, it's got to follow that template. And then, of course, as you do that, then you let go of that hand, but that's still pushing. Come over, squeeze, and glide up. And if the first cone isn't that good, do it again and get a little bit taller cone. Karate chopping more than like that. Bottom fingers rather than the top fingers. Collar, a taller, better cone and then we're ready to push it down. You'll need water because halfway down you dry out and you get sticky. So this is going to be the same thing, leaning about three quarters and then get your, your shoulder into it and put your weight on it. And then very important, as you come down, make sure that you don't have your hand like that. Have it more straight up and down or you'll get that Mount Fuji cone shape. All right, so I'm going to get over here and do that. Top, push down, and then bend the wrist so we get a dome. And right now, if you're doing it right, you have sides and a top and a template for it to follow. And if you're hearing my voice, I'm, you know, I'm struggling. I got the core tightened. And uh, remember, it isn't brute strength as much as steadiness and um, keeping your hands together and relying on that, the, um, what does judo do? The center of gravity is with you. All right, now let's go back up again. As you can see, it's still a little wobbly, so we'll do step one again. Lean into it, come over, squeeze, Make sure that you're gliding up and not getting any hourglass. And then if we have to, we'll do a little bit taller. Lean into it. Okay, just tell me what you want to be reminded about. <laughs> That's a butt punch, isn't it? <laughs> Got my Siri talking to me. All right, now we're gonna go in and straight down. A little extra water. Bend my wrist and relax. And once again, sides, top. Okay, now we're ready to go. Now, a lot of times you're just a little bit off and instead of going all the way up to the top, 
I call it fine tuning. And that just means get the sides going and get the top going and hold it and then slowly relax and you're on the center. You know, when you're really close, you don't have to go all the way back up to the cone and all the way back down. All right, now we're gonna open it up. Most of you had this, but Maddie and Haley will get it tonight. Stiff thumb, extra water, pushing right down, and we're gonna make a big cavity or a bowl shape. All the way down. And then stop when you think it's deep enough. And if you stop in the middle, or you hiccup, or you talk, or you laugh, you can throw it off. So once again, the concentration and not, and not um, doing that hitch. Come out, and as you can see, that's too thick. So we'll go down a little bit more. Getting down to about that quarter of an inch thick. You don't have to get the water out, because if you do this, you'll still be able to take the measurement, but I always like to take the water out. Of course, squeeze it out before you do that. And that's a little bit on the thick side, but I'd rather you guys do it a little bit thicker than too, too thin. All right, now that you've got that, we're ready to open it up to the donut stage. And remember, curl your fingers. You don't want to go down and get to the bat. And we want that portion karate chopping and these fingers helping that finger. Very important, the thumb should be out like that and not poking up underneath. Out like that, resting in that portion. All right, ready? And extra water because you will dry out halfway. Now you go about medium speed. Before it was three-fourths, now about medium. So push down and curl back. Down and start curling back. Extra water. Bring the donut out, hold it steady, and then slowly release. And it will have a tendency to dry on you, but that water will help keep it from getting too sticky. Sop up whenever necessary. And then very important, because you have stretched it out, you want to do the counter stretch or the compressing the clay back into center. Did I mention the uh, surfing on Monday? Okay. I have always called this surfing, because if you notice, when I press down, there's going to be a little bump and I ride that bump into center. Much like a surfer rides a wave into the shore. I have never surfed in my life, so I don't know what I'm talking about, but if you notice that little bump, now support yourself and support yourself. And if you notice, you know, you're always you know, trying to figure out, so if you notice I've got my thumb in there, a little extra water, and um, pinkies up or wherever you can keep it, and push down. There's that little bump, and then instead of trying to move your hand, move your back. My hands are sticking where they started, but because my back is moving, I'm able to get that movement inward. And of course, small, not big. You get the big, you get the ruts. And do it again. Lean into it, steady. And at the end, you should have something like that. And if you've got that, you've, known, you've done a good job. Sometimes you'll have remnants, but those can be easily picked up. And if you have a real bad problem, you can always use this to flatten it out. Just remember, we only do one half, the half that's going away from us, not the half that's coming toward us. If that makes sense to everybody? Coming toward will gouge. Here it's going away. This also helps to compress the clay too. And I did I do the little curly cue for you guys last Monday? After you're done, you can either have a flat bottom, and this is a little bit more of an advanced tip, but you can try this. You can leave this with a little bit of that spiral stuff. Can you see that? And that little bit of that spiral can catch the glaze later on in the firing and have a nice little thing when you look down inside the pot. Um, a little craftsmanship issue that <coughs> raises your pot up to another level. Okay, now before you get started, you wanna make sure that your donut on, is on center because if it's off center, you're gonna have problems. 
And now we're going to be working at four o'clock here, right here. And remember, you want the sponge to be able to come off so that you can see your fingers and have your other fingers meet those two. Many people have their thumb like that, and thus you can't get your fingers on there. So have that thumb back a little bit and your bird bent. Same thing over here so that they meet up. Over here at four, your thumb is connected. And we're gonna be driving in with this hand and then eventually pinching. And I'll tell you when I'm pinching. But because they're connected, where one goes, the other one has to go. There's a tendency for beginners to do this instead of together. So watch the two connecting. And these demos are very important. We'll keep going every session we'll have demo because you're going to be able to spot areas that you're having trouble with. Or you're going to be more interested in things that you weren't uh, paying attention to early on. All right, so ready? Oh, the other thing is finger here, finger here, not down here and not down here. So you're right on that edge and you're driving it inward. Ready? Here we go. Inward, inward, inward. Now I'm pinching and still driving it inward. You can see that it's growing. Stopping here, not doing anything. And I can come away or I can immediately thicken up my leg. Remember, a nice little uh, hold and then thicken it up. And if you have an uneven lip, now is the time to needle tool. Yep. Now is the time to get over here, just like you're doing this, connect and go over and get, cut it off evenly. If you're too high on one side and too low, what's generally gonna happen is that you'll be thick on one side and thick over or thin over here. And that goes back to centering. If you're not centering proper, properly here, your walls are gonna be up. Okay, remember you wanna get water both ways, no sprinkling, get it inside and outside evenly, sop up extra, and get back into position. Two fingers, two fingers meeting, and the thumb over there for, for um, connectivity and steadiness. Key finger, but they're actually together, you're gonna to be pushing down and over and you'll see more and more of the black. So I'll talk you through it and I'll let you know when I'm pinching and then you're gonna look for that little spare tire, that little bump. All right, so here we go. Down and over, pushing inward, pushing inward, pushing inward. Now I'll pinch, wait for that spare tire and now start coming up. You stay too long, you'll rip it off, you'll get that hourglass. And as with everything, you want to be right on the edge. Because if you're not doing any pinching, you're not going to get anywhere. You do too much, you could rip it off. And immediately you can start thickening it up. And you want to maintain that volcano state. So if you're starting to lose the volcano state, hands in. And remember the choking. And very easily, for the people that did this on Monday, it's quite an easy uh, thing to pick up. Bring it back in, because the minute it goes straight up or a little bit out, centrifugal force forces it out into a bowl. And that's not what you're after right now. So water inside, outside, get ready. Same thing, now my thumb probably can't get out because the wall's too tall. And same thing, inward and over. Over, over, over. Now I pinch. There's my spare tire, and we start coming up together. And relax a little bit toward the top. Hold it, and then come away and thicken up your lip. I'm losing that volcano, so I'm gonna just do a little bit of that collaring. Not radical, because if you're radical, you won't be able to get your hand inside. Clay will stretch to get you to let your hand in, but you just don't want to close it up to a ridiculous small hole. Lubricate and get your hands back into there. And same thing, down and over. Notice we're going slower than we were initially. Inward, downward, inward, pinch. And now we come up together. Don't stay too long in one spot. Relax right about here. And when I say relax, you're still coming up, but just not pinching as much because that's already been thrown. 
and you don't want to get it paper thin. I'm going to do one more pull and then we'll do the, um, the finishing. Okay, pinch. Got a little thin toward the bottom. Can you see where it got thin? Right there. And it's starting to flare out here. So I will do a little bit of collaring to bring that in. And then put the wooden rib on it to get that wall straightened up. I like to take the water out first before I do that. Notice I squeezed all the water out before I put the sponge in there. And I gained that much, and there's still more down there. Oops, lost it. Slippery little guy. And then the wooden rib. Later on, you'll use the metal rib for shaping. But this will be your friend for this assignment and the bowl assignment. And why do they call them a rib? Probably because the first ones they used were curvatures of some animal rib. I don't really know the reason for that, but I've always speculated. Remember uh, Maria Martinez, the Native American lady, was using a, um, a, a gourd, cut out gourd. All right, perpendicular, meaning straight up and down, so you have a nice wall up against it. My inside hand comes to about here, and then they come up together. It's a tall cylinder, and notice my elbow's way out in space, but I still got this one in. All right, up against it, inside pushing out, come up together. And stay with it all the way. And notice how slow we're going now compared to our first. If I was to turn on the wheel real fast, this would really start to go terribly um, wobbly and wonky and all over the place. Now, I can get back in here and clean this area. That area right here is We'll cut this down and you'll see that area is going to be a little bit thinner, a little bit of that hourglass issue, and then thicker up right here. And then the top, <coughs> you got two shaping things that we're going to be talking about. One is the collaring, and I'm bringing it in. And then later on, we'll talk about the hit em high, hit em low. All right, now, chamois. Do you have a chamois right there? Let me have that. There we go. And uh, didn't I offer you a better chamois? That's who it was. I thought it was, now that I look at the green one. Um, let me cut that lip down just to show you how that's done again. Over, not poking, but get it connected and then just start a line and get deeper and deeper. All beginners tend to want to do this one-handed like this and it won't, you have to support it so it's not gonna get floppy. And then that right angles, you've gotta soften that so it's visually appealing. And if you were gonna make a mug, you'd want that nice and round so your lips would fit on there and um, be um, sensuous. We all know that our lips are very, uh, have a lot of nerve endings and like the fingers. And um, nobody wants a rough edge on their lips. Okay, and not only that, but let me do the hit them high, hit them low. I've got to hit them low and hit them high. And as I, I can spread it out and give it that outward turn. And sometimes that can be very nice. Remember, do you have a serrated rib around here? Anybody have a serrated rib? I'll go get it. All right. Do we have one here? Go ahead. Quick, quick, quick. We'll give you some decorative ideas of what to play around with because the cylinder is your um, 
is your assignment and you can't throw unless you know how to make a cylinder. But within the cylinder, there's some things you can do to fancy it up a little bit. Just so Maddie can have a good view. And we'll wait. There we go. Good enough. Um, now the teeth, you know, this could be your fingernails, it could be a comb, it could be a pick, it could be a fork, but you have that here and you can do something like this. And isn't that nice? Possible. Okay, and that's, that's one way, but you could also just do, and as we turn this on, You know, really sweep it up, or sweep it down. You can play around with various textures. Um, you know, this isn't nearly as nice as if you do some of that stuff. Patterns that you're trying to make. And remember, we humans love to do marks. I think I told you the other day that it separates us from the animal world. We like to make decorative things, whether the cavemen did it on stone walls. Well, they probably did it everywhere, but we know now because it's more permanent on a stone wall than if they drew it on the, the dirt and dust. All right, now, hold it like a pencil, grab it, hold your fingers, hold that, get that, and then find an area and do a bevel and wait until you feel that and then come straight out. And when I say feel that, you'll feel the bat. Come over here and plow it away, a la like that. And then hold it and turn it on. Go slow and inch it on just a little bit. And if you do it right, and I didn't do it right, you see how it wanted to, it came off and it almost wanted to go back and reattach itself. You want it to kind of slide up and away. All right, and then of course, you can always get in here and soften that up. When you get your cylinders, you'll put them under plastic, and then when they're leather hard, you'll either rub them with your hand or take your metal rib and scrape them like you did with your coil belt pots, and then polish the bottoms with your spoon and then put your name on the bottom. Sheldon, we'll put it over there so you don't lose it. And then cutting it off is one of your last, but if you've got water in here, make sure that that's removed. I've just got a small little bit of water in there. Nothing that's gonna be detrimental. Thumbs down, turn it on, about the diameter. Turn it on slowly and cut straight through once. That's all you need. With the slip off and with my hands relatively dry, I can just hold on to it and turn it on and it'll snap off. But just remember, and I'll do it one more time, and we won't do the aquaplaning again because you'll, you probably by now know, but just a little bit of water. And we do this because a lot of times you overwork a pot as a beginner and it's quite gooey and quite um, soft. And when you pick it up, it tends to fold or get out of shape. And so the aquaplaning will give you the chance to slide it over and get it off. But remember in the beginning, it's wise to cut these in half and look and see, and we'll see how I did. And remember, I'm predicting it kind of thin here. Nope, not bad. Well, a little bit thin right there um, compared to that area right here. And of course, you can see the, the thickness that I have here. It could be a little bit thinner down there. But the idea is to get the wall as even as possible and straight. And of course, now is the time to reclaim. And remember, you can always cut a strip to prove that you have been working. But believe me, in another couple of weeks, you'll all be getting cylinders of some form, shape, and whether you do this or not. But the other thing, and I, like I said, I didn't see very many people here last weekend. Uh, now is the start that you have to force yourself or make yourself come in and give yourself a couple of, well, the idea is that you're in here six hours a week and you should be doing six hours outside of class or more. And that will pay dividends because 
as much as it's frustrating to come in on a Saturday and not get anything done, your muscles will get attuned, you'll get further down the road. And as I told you earlier, effort is three-fourths of the game here. And I reward effort by keeping an eye on um, who's here and who's not here. And we have GoPros all over the place for me to monitor you. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> But nowadays, everybody's got a camera somewhere. Um, all right, you two, if you're 